Yeah, it's it's been a discussion really for the last three years. Um, after talking to people from other programs that did it, uh, they felt like it was a positive. Um, and then the other thing is for us with the uh, with the unrivaled show that we already do, the cameras are already around all the time. So uh, between the coaches and the leadership, uh, the leadership council, we didn't really feel like it'd be a whole whole lot different than what we already do. What were some of the positives that you know maybe other coaches laid out? Uh, I'm not going to get into what other programs, but obviously it's it's an op opportunity to get our program out there uh, on a national scale and, and allow people to maybe see behind the curtain a little bit. How has Shaka Tony improved as a pass rusher? It seems like he's been more consistent this year. Would you agree with that? And, and what would you say if there's anything he's improved? With? Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit of that. I think he's gotten bigger and stronger. Um, I think. Obviously, he's a year older and more experienced. Um, obviously, he's moved up the depth chart and, and getting more opportunities as well. So I think all those things factor, and I don't think it's one necessarily specific thing. I think he's a year older. He's a, he's a year bigger and stronger. He's got more opportunities from where he's at on the depth chart, and I think it's a combination of those. Jeff, what is this group like for you guys from a recruiting standpoint? Can you develop more time and can you tell us what your schedule is like? Yeah, so we're leaving tonight. Most of us are all leaving tonight. Um, we're getting out of here either on uh, planes, trains, automobiles, uh, out of here. Um, and then we're all kind of scrambling to get back here either Friday night or Saturday morning because Saturday is our Sunday practice. So, um, you know, that's that's the challenge is you know you got to be you got to you know be at the games on Friday night that you want to be at um, and then get back here for Saturday morning practice and then I'm going back out Saturday after practice to get to some Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening games as well um, so it'll be not really I mean, a lot of people look at the bye week as you know downtime I wouldn't necessarily describe it that way for the coaches we did we did, you know, the coaches were able to come in a little bit later in the mornings, to take your kids to school type of deal. But besides that, not a not a whole lot of change for us. Hey James, offensively, what have you learned by self scouting this week? Yeah, to be honest with you, we're not done it um, because of the way we practiced. Um, we really spent most of our time early in the week on Maryland, and then we're going to be doing self scouting. Uh, the coordinators are here tomorrow, and the GAs the rest of the time. So we've we've started it, but we'll get we'll get deep into it over the next couple of days, and then and then be able to focus on that come Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Give a sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like always, there's some tendencies that you have, um, offensively, defensively, special teams. Tendencies all aren't always a bad thing. It means you're good at some things, um, but then there's also some things that obviously you fall into some patterns that you want to tweak some things to disguise. So whether it's, you know, running a play out of certain formation, whether it's defensively, whether you're tipping things by always running a pressure to the three technique or to the shade or whatever it may be, uh, we look at those things. And then it's also having conversations uh, with people that have broken you down and, and some of your opponents as well. James, how do you feel like you guys have managed the running back so far? I mean, obviously a lot of moving parts, like you said, it seems like it's going to continue to kind of be that way. Yeah, it is what it is uh, at this point. Uh, we got four guys. Uh, we kind of keep getting asked this question, but we got four guys that we're going to keep playing until until someone separates. The the really the answer uh, hasn't really changed at this at this stage. You got a young team. How do you kind of ask them to the development and kind of letting things happen organically? Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good question. Um, I think the easy thing, you know that that I think probably people question is, do you just play your starters and ride them guys and play them as much as you possibly can? Um, that's gonna give you the best chance to execute at the highest level. But then one of those guys go down or misses some time for whatever reason, then the argument is, well, it sure would have been nice to get that back up some time because now he's he's in a position where he needs to play so we really try to balance the two we got to do enough that's going to give us the best chance to win the game but also in a in a way that we want to get those other guys um those other guys some confidence as well i know not everybody does it that way 
Um, some people are just trying to dominate and try to get their best players as many plays as they possibly can and build the confidence that way. Um, I think it's a fine line. You know, I think it's a fine line. What we tried to do early is get those guys to, some reps and let them play. Um, and then I know there's some there's there's questions about that as well. We just try to balance the two: play the guys that we need to play enough to win the game, but then also be able to get some other guys in there to gain some experience. And hopefully, over time, both groups, the ones and the twos, are executing at a championship level. To, uh, you know, so you don't really feel it or see it when those guys are in there. Yeah, Coach, speaking of younger players, Blake Zalar last week was named the developmental player for uh, one of five players. What has he shown you in his short uh, period of time here for him to earn that distinction? Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of a neat kid. You know, he was committed to another school. Uh, we weren't really involved with him. Um, I think I was on the road recruiting and saw on Twitter him running a 100-meter dash. And I was like, wow, that was pretty impressive for a 300-pound kid running 100 meters. Um, and looked good running, and we checked into him. He was committed to another school. We were able to swing him late. Um, it's very important to him. Uh, he's really committed. Uh, he did a great job with the trainer, um, you know, really kind of coming in here. He was probably further along from a strength and conditioning standpoint than a lot of the freshmen usually are. I thought his commitment and also the trainer that he worked with did a really good job. Um, but he's a kid that we're pretty excited about, you know, that we're able to put him in practice, we're able to function, um, and he's able to get his get his job done. So you know, we're pretty excited about him on special teams on punt, and then we're, we're pretty excited about him on offense as well. I, I have, um, in my career, I have been places where a guy like that has played for, for us and played at a high level. So you know, we're, we're pretty excited about him. How do you like the timing of the, this first bye weekend? I would have hated the timing of this bye week if this was the only bye week we had. But with two bye weeks, I think it's I think it's really good. James, you mentioned in August this defense was kind of on a trajectory to be the best you've had here. Three weeks in, they still on that trajectory. And what what has impressed you most from the last three weeks? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think overall we've done some deep, good things. I think there's been times where we played at a really high level. I think inside the ten yard line, we have played phenomenal. Um, there's been there's been flashes, but there's also been flashes of inconsistency, and that could go back to Ben's question as well. Rotating a lot of guys in there. Um, at this stage, I probably would have thought that the defensive line would have been a little bit more disruptive, uh, especially from a sack perspective and a pressure perspective. Uh, I also do know that people are spending a lot of time in keeping guys in to chip more than before, um, but but I like where we are. I think we got chances pretty good. Um, I have a lot of confidence in our in our D line. I got a lot of confidence in our defense as a whole. Um, but but I, I probably would have thought you know, we maybe would be a little bit more disruptive and a little bit more consistent. We've showed it in flashes. We we can be more consistent. Three three games with your offensive line. How do you think that's kind of gone? Is it, is it about where you expected it to be? Or? Yeah, I would say I would say about where we, we expected. We we again we've had a few flashes of inconsistency. Um, but there's been times where I think I think we've been we've been pretty good. Um, I think the other aspect that factors in, I think a lot of times the O line it shows up when you're talking about protection. But some of that last week was our running backs as well. Uh, so it's all of it. But yeah, I, I'd like to. You know, obviously you'd like to have your O line be dominant. You'd like to have your D line be dominant week in and week out. Uh, we're not there yet, but but I think we're I think we're headed you know headed closer in that direction. Sean told us after the game he was excited to get to work because he felt like he could critique himself a lot off the pick game. Um, how have you seen him kind of respond to that? And no turnovers in the first three games. Obviously, that's a number that jumps out. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. That, that's probably the thing I've been most impressed with um, with the team. You know, I, I, every team meeting, I am showing them things that are happening all over the country, whether it's whether it's uh, burning timeouts uh, because of substitution issues, whether it's too many guys on the field, um, you know, whether it's unnecessary penalties, whether it's unnecessary clock management, not running out of bounds at the end of a game in a two minute. There's just a bunch of things that, that we show them. It's to the point now where literally Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday, night, the guys will be texting me Coach, did you see what happened? I know you're going to show this in the team meeting the next day. And to me, that's that's really good when guys are thinking like that. Um, and and for the most part, I think we've been 
pretty clean. Um, you know, especially when you talk about protecting the football on offense, when you talk about, you know, holding, holding uh, people on defense to field goals, um, and special teams being able to, to, to be able to control field position and be able to make some big plays, obviously. So um, I think we got to get our return games going a little bit more, uh, kickoff return and punt return. But overall, I think we're playing pretty good complementary football. It may not be sexy, but it's really good, sound, complementary football, in my opinion. And I think you can win a lot of games like that. Now, we got to take the next step, be a little bit more explosive consistently, um, create a little more turnovers on defense, get some more sacks and pressures on the quarterbacks, and stay on the field on third down on offense, and get off the field third down on defense. To me, they're the, they're the next steps for us. And we don't have to do all those things at once, because if we keep playing really sound, complimentary football and just keep chipping away in those other areas, then, then I think we'll like where we're at. James, going off of what you just said about third down on offense, you mentioned third and long being a product of first and second down, but on those third and manageables, third and fourth and fives, how have you felt you've done tactically and execution-wise on those? Yeah, I, tactically, I, you know, obviously we feel good about our plan. It's, you know, the, the quarterbacks and the receivers uh, and the tight ends are all, you know, have a voice in that. The coaches have a voice in that. We think we have a, a good plan. We got to execute. You know, we got to execute um, at a higher level. Uh, you know, we call a run play. One of the best things that you can do on third down is call a run play against pressure and wall the thing off and crease it. But if you don't block a defensive end when you're supposed to block a defensive end, the play is not going to be successful. Um, same thing in the pass game. Uh, you got to be able to figure out where the pressure is coming from, be able to adjust the pressure to that, pick it up, and then protect and, and create a, a comfortable pocket where our quarterback can throw accurately at a high level. Um, and then when we have opportunities to make plays, you know, catching the ball, we got we got to make plays. So the nice thing is Sean's done enough where he's making some plays with his feet to keep people concerned about that. Um, but. But we got it. There's no doubt we got to be better on third down. It's just it's just all the details. Is there a line of demarcation between Stout and Pinnaker as far as which is when one guy kicks and the other does? 49 and under. Yeah, 49 yard field goal and under, um, and 50 and above. Uh, 50 and above is, is Stout's is Stout's world. And and to be honest with you, um, we thought it was close, but it wasn't really close. Pinnaker, you know, really through all of camp, dominated 49 and in, and 50 and above. Um, Stout, Stout dominated. You know, so um, we thought it was closer until we ran all the numbers, and it, and it really wasn't. It was, it was pretty clean. Thanks, Coach.